Hi everyone, I'm Angela Mondu, CEO and President of Tech Nation, and we're here for the third Back on Track podcast where we bring together thought leaders and disruptors in the tech sector here to really talk about what it's going to take to get Canada back in the global tech game. I'm joined today by the amazing Angela Brown, uh, President and CEO of Moneris. And for those of you that don't know, Moneris is a leader in innovative payment solutions in um, enabling businesses across Canada to do all those things we want to do during the pandemic, which is shop online a lot. May Angela has been uh, with Moneris, I think, since 2013, almost eight years now, Angela. She's um, also got a phenomenal um, deep background in U.S. and Canadian payment solutions and had a pretty significant role as group executive at MasterCard Worldwide. Angela plays a a big role as well on boards and is a board member of Altus Group. But I'd like to say perhaps the most important role that she plays as a board member is as vice chair of Tech Nation Canada, where she's been a significant supporter of mine for the last two years. So Angela, I'm absolutely thrilled to have you here today with us. I'm very happy to be here. Thanks for having me. So as the leader of Moneris and a company that has really enabled enterprises across Canada to make that rapid transition for digital payment solutions, can you help us understand how your company really played a big part in that? And then if you have any advice for best practices in terms of small, medium enterprises looking at adopting technology as well. I'll start with saying that, you know, Moneris has every kind of customer, large and small retailers, but also service providers and professional services. And so every type of customer had a slightly different need as the pandemic uh, came upon us. And uh, I can tell you that for those customers we already had, if they were if they were not online, then what they needed was help to very quickly establish an online presence, at least to get uh, referrals and orders, but hopefully to actually capture orders and sales and shipment options right uh, immediately online. And so we launched uh, Moneris Online, which we had different capabilities already, but what small businesses needed in particular was something that was a a complete solution end to end. So they needed to be able to create a website. They needed to establish what's in that web, what's on the website, what's in the shopping cart. And then they needed to make sure they could collect payments and do so safely. So for those customers, we accelerated the launch of Moneris Online with a knitted together set of services, including logistics, including uh, we can help you ship your product. Because for many customers, they didn't know how much business they would get. They didn't want to sign up for something massive uh, or they didn't want to do as much revenue share, quite frankly, that is required by some of the big, well-known providers. And this was a way for them to establish themselves online and get a fair deal for how they would sell online and make sure that they were safe and secure. So that was the first thing we had to do. But there were some of our customers, they were already online. They, They may have had a physical store as well. And what they needed was in order to expand their services, they needed to be able to enhance the shopping cart, put more products into that shopping cart than they had had in the past. They needed extra security and fraud protection because not only were Canadians shopping online, but also there was a big shift and a big focus by uh, the bad guys to try to commit fraud online. And so we had to very quickly help our customers protect themselves from that kind of risk. And then the third area where I'd say there's an ongoing need is that for customers that have both online and face-to-face or in-store services, they don't wanna have a set of uh, services for one and then a different set of services and different set of vendors for the other. They want a unified, a uni- unified commerce experience across their in-store and their online presence. And so that we launched Moneris Go. It's a cloud-based point of sale capability that helps them create that combined view. And so you think about it, every business was a little different. Large businesses that were online and had in-store, they needed curbside delivery capability, which is a hybrid of e-commerce. 
it allows the customer to order online, but they need to then be able to create the physical delivery when the customer identifies themselves and pulls up to the curb and, and get takes their delivery. So there were many challenges, many things we had to do. It was extremely busy time for us. And uh, I think we very successfully helped many Canadian businesses transform their business to make sure they were as ready as possible for the new environment that we're all working in. You know about our digital marketplace, Angela, that we proudly launched. It's almost been like eight months now, which is really a, a digital business intelligence platform, real time where any tech company, any size from micro, small to multinational can really um, put their information, their areas of specialization online and be real time visible and showcased for any purchaser in government or business across the nation. So really, really important tool that we've actually been able to launch more agile procurement programs with. Moneris has been a, a huge supporter of the launch and the ongoing development of this digital marketplace. And you're, you are a partner along with nine other partners. Um, and so I really wanted to talk to you as a CEO in the tech sector and some of these mandates that we have to really drive the acceleration of technology in Canada. Why would you, or why do you think it's important that we invest in platforms like this and in showcasing technology of small, large, you name it, across the nation? You know, I think that the marketplace initiative that Tech Nation has created is such a critical portion of what a business needs to consider as they're trying to get online. So if you think about it, just because you create a website and you create a great experience on your website, you need to be found. And I think you were attacking the very challenge that many small businesses discovered and that we ourselves as well have identified that once we help this customer get all the way to a nice unified online experience, they need marketing and they need connections and they need to be part of a network. And so the marketplace initiative is a way for them to very quickly become part of a network where other players will go to look for the services they need and they will find this Canadian business and they may not have found this Canadian business if they weren't part of this network. But in general, we are also uh, advising and we provide a lot of education ourselves. And I know that Tech Nation is a huge provider of education when it comes to technology for business is that you have to make sure that you are leveraging this presence you have online and reaching as broad an audience as possible. And so that means that you need to start considering what kind of search you're engaged in. Are you getting the right hits when somebody is searching for the services that you provide? You need to start collecting your own customer information and contact information in a regulatory and responsible way. And we can advise on that. And uh, there's lots of other players that can help you, but you have to be able to reach out to your customer, whether it's email, whether it's within an app, whether it's uh, in other ways of broadcasting, and you need to be found by people looking for your services. And so all of these are challenges in a small business that was only accustomed to managing a physical storefront or physical office if they're professional services now needs to consider, well, they're not getting street traffic anymore or they're not having people go to the, the local mall to find the businesses that they need for the services that they need. They are going online and so you need to be found online as well. And I think that all of these are options for you to be found and for you to conduct the new digital marketing that's going to be an important part of your business model going forward. So as you know, Angela, we still have work to do in the tech sector. And I was recently reading a Canadian diversity report from 2020, and it lays out women executives and women on boards by sector. And the top performing sector is actually utilities and pipeline, believe it or not. Tech sector is not doing nearly as well when you compare the numbers. So my question for you as a leader in our sector, what do you think some specific actions as tech sector leaders we should be taking in Canada to really help get our sector performing more like the top sector in utilities and pipelines? 
I'm going to start with the government program that we've all just undertaken, which is the 50-30 commitment. And I think that, that because, and the reason I would start with that is because the industry has to commit to making change. And by adopting that commitment, each company that's a part of this very large industry can start to build the pipeline of talent that they will be hiring and that they will be moving through the ranks of their organization to create that diversity over time. It never happens overnight. Uh, it, 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 you have to build the, the pipeline up first. And so if each company commits to doing that, that's a great contribution that the Canadian government has made to the initiative. I, I came in originally out of the financial services sector, not so much fintech, that's where I evolved to. But the financial services sector, in fact, committed quite a long time ago to increasing diversity and inclusion. And so they, uh, I think my career is a result of larger contributors to that industry, making a commitment, helping ensure that I had opportunities along the road. I obviously had to have the education and work hard and, and uh, create different steps in my own career path. And that's what every individual needs to do. But I think the tech sector needs to start to build up their pipelines. And I do, I believe that they are doing that now, but they're doing it and uh, they've got a ways to go to create the pipelines of talent that are going to be needed for each level of organ uh, in an organization. I do also think though, that to the earlier point we discussed about you have to be found, if you're an entrepreneur and you are part of that underrepresented community, whichever one you're a part of, that you need to be found. And now with if you participate in some of these marketplaces, making sure that you are known as an entrepreneur that comes from one of those underrepresented communities allows the, or the industry to in fact accelerate your progress and therefore accelerate the presence of underrepresented communities into having an equal representation in the community. So I think that uh, you need to be known, you need to be found, and or the organizations need to invest in these people as well to help create the balance that we're all looking for when it comes to diversity and inclusion. What are your thoughts in terms of, and I really believe that to, to fix this global challenge we have, it needs to be a government industry kind of collaboration. What is your advice for Canada or thoughts in terms of what we need to do to get that clout back and start improving our national or global position as a tech leader? When I think about Canada's global position as a tech leader, uh, what I think about is that first of all, we do have great education. We also have a lot of great innovation in Canada, where at, in our universities, and if you've had a chance to tour some of the um, amazing capabilities that some of our, our universities have, you realize that we are creating technology that the rest of the world really needs. And so what's, the, what's missing in my mind is that last mile between where the technology has started to become uh, more ubiquitous, that people are starting to want to use it and getting it in place, implemented and applied at different levels of the economy. And I, I'm not sure what the real obstacles are there, but I believe we have the capability to get that last mile implemented because that's when you transform the culture and the economy. So if you have great ideas and they sit on the shelf or you or you export those ideas to somebody else to implement, then you're not getting the full benefit of what you have invented. If you take what you have invented and you turn that into solutions that solve, and I would say business problems maybe is the bigger gap than consumer problems. In that, Canadian consumers are very good adopters of technology. When it comes to payments technology, Canada has been at the leading edge of a payments adoption or technology adoption. Canadians are ready to do it, but it's been slower for, and I won't say large businesses because they will make the investment and they will make sure that they have what they need when it comes to technology. But when we look at mid-sized and small businesses, they have been slower in Canada to adopt the technology 
that they need. And that's why uh, many of them were really under the gun when the pandemic hit, because they had not made that last leg investment in how they were going to reach their customers. So I believe that what we need to do as an industry, as a government, as tech nation is we need to help uh, businesses adopt the technology and close the gap between where they are today and their customers in order to truly get the value out of uh, the technology and make it ubiquitous across the economy. That's when we'll see big differences in the way the economy operates, the operating models of some businesses will transform dramatically and you will start to see that uh, the, mo the momentum build for technology to cascade throughout the economy.